Today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to set up the Meta Ads API access. So most of the work is gonna be done in the Meta Developer Portal where you're gonna be accessing a Meta app. And then there are two ways you could go from there. If you have standard access to the business portfolio, then you're gonna be forced to use the standard path. But if you have admin privileges, then you can make a persistent token, which will not have any expiration at all. So one's gonna require an app ID and app secret for the standard 60 day access. And then the other method is gonna go through a system user and both are gonna get you an access token, which you just push into N8N and voila, you could start pulling data directly from your ad accounts. Another thing to consider is what kind of situation you have in terms of having access to the ad account on a business portfolio level, right? So one scenario could be you having access to the ad account through a partner integration. If the client or the division that you know has the ad account if they added you as a partner and that's how you know you directly are managing the accounts you know you just want to make sure you're aware of that and then the simpler route that most companies probably have is just having you directly added into the business portfolio and assign you know you having the assets assigned to you directly from there if you are a partner, you want to make sure that you have full control to the assets that you're going to want to pull data from, right? So Facebook page and probably the ad account as well. Now, the second step is you're going to want to make sure that your profile has specific permissions that you're going to need. So you're going to want to go to edit business portfolio permissions and make sure you have apps and integrations on right? So if you are not an admin, make sure that an admin does this for you. Click save. And then this part is now complete. You're also going to want to make sure that your profile has access to the specific assets that you're going to want to pull data from, right? So before we were looking on the partner level, making sure that your partner has been assigned you the correct access, but now we're also looking at the user level, right? So I'm going to click into here, assign assets, and then just make sure that the right ad account is being shared. Here, actually, you really only need view performance because the way the API access works is it's gonna basically pull the permissions that you already have directly you know, in the platform as if you're just going in and doing things yourself. So theoretically, especially for beginning builds, mostly gonna be pulling data, you're not actually changing anything in that account. So if you have view performance, that should be totally fine. So I'm gonna just make sure to add, okay, perfect. So now I am ready to create an app, which is gonna be the next step. So you're gonna to want to go to apps under accounts, click add, create a new app ID. And here I'm just gonna put some you know, placeholder data like test, um, under use cases, it's important that you actually select other. Otherwise, it's not gonna show you the fields that you're gonna need later. And then you're gonna be selecting a business. And then for details, you know, this all looks good. So let's say you're integrated with a partnership method. Here it's gonna be your direct business portfolio, not your clients, and that's totally fine. As long as all the permissions we set up earlier are correct. Create app, and then we should be all set is going to ask you for the password, so I'm going to fill that out. All right, our app is now created. Now there's a couple steps we want to do in this interface. First, you're going to want to go to add product, and then you want to go down and click marketing API, and then setup, and then this all looks good. And yeah, we are done here. So afterwards, I'm gonna show you how to get your app ID and your app secret. You're gonna go down to app settings and then basic, and then it should be right here. Perfect. So one thing you're gonna note that this business is not verified and you're gonna to want to go through the verification process for the business if you haven't already. This actually takes, you know, couple of days to process. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this with business that is already verified. That way we could continue going through the steps. But in order to do this, you literally click start business verification. And then you click here. This is just going to verify that 
you are the business owner or you know you are connected to the business and that everything is legitimate that way you know they feel better and safer about letting you use the api tools all right so i just added business that is verified that way i could show you how to do the next steps after you're good with this part so i'm going to go ahead and just click save changes one thing to note is you're going to need a privacy policy url just for future steps. So I'm gonna go ahead while we're here and add right there. Cool, then save again. So from here, there's two different directions you could go. Again, really depend on whether you're limited to standard access or if you have admin access. I'm gonna do the standard access one first. And if you, know, you don't fall into this category, just skip through to the admin access section. All right, for my standard access listeners, you're gonna to want to go to tools and then graph API explorer. And then what this is, is just a way to communicate with the meta ads server, right? So, you know, there's different methods you could do and it will basically, you know, help you communicate and get the right tokens with the right, you know, prompts. So, so first what we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure we select the meta app that we just created so for me, that was test. You're going to want to select the user access token. The other two are for more complex situations, which probably won't apply in the beginning. And then for permissions, I'm gonna show you a whole list that you're gonna to want to put in here. Let's see if it, there we go. So all of these are gonna be useful. You're probably not gonna use all of them at once, but just having it in there saves you peace of mind because so you, you don't have to go back and do it later. I'll go and click generate access token and it's gonna ask you to sign into your account and also select the pages that are associated with the ad accounts that you're gonna be pulling data from. So I would go ahead and select the correct one and then also ask for the business as well and the Instagram account. So click save once that's good. Boom, got it. So you're gonna get an access token here generated, and this is your short-lived access token. So this one typically only lasts for one to two hours, but you could also exchange it for a long-lived access token, which lasts for 60 days. So to do that, we're gonna want to just copy this token into our notes so we have it handy. Short lived access token. Next, we're gonna to want to copy this exact format into that Metagraphs API, and this will help us get that long lived access token. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy up to here, and then I go back to where we were before, and then paste that in. And as you can see, this is where the app ID and the app seeker come in handy. So the short lived token, that's just this one, so that'll be pretty easy. And then for the other fields, we're gonna to need to go back into our app. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the apps. So to do that, go back to developers.facebook.com, click into your app, go into basic, and then there you go. You have the app secret, paste that in, and then you also have the app ID right here, but it also shows up here. Copy that and then just plug that in. And then before we do that, just want to make sure you see the difference. So when you hover over this and click it, it shows that the expiration is going to be, you know, same day, right? Because today for me is August 9 and that's when it expires. So after we click submit, you're going to get this section fill out and you're gonna to wanna to copy this full access token and put that into here. Now, when I click that same question mark thing, that is not a question mark. Now, when I click more info again, I could see that the expiration is now 60 days from now. So, you know, we are now all set. We've done all the hard steps. Now just plugging into N8N. I'm gonna save this token to use later, but first I wanna go back and go through the system users route. So let me just save that. This token, 
And then yeah, we're all set with the standard access. So if you're gonna go the system users route, which honestly is a lot easier, is just again, admin access. That's the main thing you need. There's a couple more prerequisites, which I'm gonna go through here pretty quickly. So you must have a fully verified business manager account. We already mentioned that. Your app should be business type and have the marketing API product added. We've done that. So the last thing here is we just need to turn the app on. So in order to that, we already added the privacy policy URL. If you didn't, the way to do that is just go into app settings basic and just add that in here. And then to set it live, it's simply just toggle it on right here. And then it should work if everything is good. All right, so our app is now live and we're ready to use it for the system user. So what we're going to do is go into the business portfolio again and then under users, go to system users. So what a system user is, is basically like a fake user that just has the right credentials in order to you know, access certain things. So the previous method that tied the access directly to the user, this is gonna make a fake system user which you can access directly. So I hope that makes sense a bit. You're just making another entity and because it is a bit more standard, and because an admin setting this up, that's why it allows it to have access for an indefinite amount of time. So we're gonna want to click add, then just make a name for it. And then you're gonna want to make it an admin, that way you don't have any issues. And then you get this error. In order to create a system users, an app must be part of this business. Please add an app and then try again. So the reason we're getting this is because if you recall correctly, I changed the business portfolio to be one that has an active verification and it's gonna be this one. So here, when I go into system users and I create a new system, let's see, test two, admin, now it's gonna work. Okay, well, so you're only allowed to have one system user at a time and I already created one before this video just to test things out. So assume that, you know, Everything's working here, but all you have to do is add in another user and then the system user role shouldn't really matter. Both of these should work. And then boom, you have your system. So next step is gonna be to assign assets. Uh, you're gonna wanna assign all the assets that you wanna pull data from. Just like with the user, you only need to have view performance on. After that, you wanna go to apps and select the app that you've just made. And then any other assets that would make sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and click assign. And then it might ask you to verify account, so that would be, you know, quick step. And then if you refresh, it should show the new assets that you've assigned. Cool. Yep, so we should be all set here. And then you wanna click generate token and then select that app again, click next. Here is where you could make it never expire. And then you're gonna to wanna to select these exact permissions. These should give you a comprehensive list of all the possible situations you might find yourself in. So off camera, I'm gonna just add them in real quick. All right, all set. Now we click generate token. Hopefully everything works. Um, looks like we need approval. So we just requested to generate an access token and in this account specifically, there's this two-step verification where someone else needs to approve that. So I'm not able to do that right now, but I promise you, after you generate this token, you're ready to go to the next step. So the final step is just to go to N8N and pull all this in. So you're gonna want to go here, then create credential, and then search up Facebook Graph API. So you're gonna want to do the one without app in it. Um, and then, yeah, just put in your access token that you saved from earlier. Um, again, right now, I only have the long-lived, but the systems one would work the same way here. Click save and then see the connections tested successfully. So that's good to hear. And then I'm actually gonna go to this demo workflow that I have and basically just plug that in here. So create new credential. 
And if all this works correctly, what you're going to want to do is create a HTTP request node. So the way you do that is right click, add node, HTTP request. And that's how I got to that configuration from earlier. And then once you do that, I'll show you what you set up for the rest. So for the URL, you're going to want to do HTTPS graph.facebook.com dash V23 count. And then this is the ad account from which you're going to be pulling data from just to confirm that the key is working correctly. And then dash insights. And then here, make sure you're selecting the credential, the predefined credential that you just created. And then just make sure you toggle on query parameters and for fields, you're gonna to want to have campaign underscore name, comma impressions, comma spend. And then for header, make sure it's content dash type application JSON. And then when you execute, if everything's working correctly, it should start pulling data. So that is exactly how you set up the meta ads API. And I showed you two different ways to do it. And also in the beginning, I showed you two different situations that you might be in, whether in the being a partner or being directly added to the business portfolio. So once you get here, it's gonna be super fun because you have so many different levers you can start pulling, so many automations and agentic workflows you can start building out. And they should definitely help you become more efficient and get better insights at wherever you're working. So that's it for this video. Hope you liked it. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Any questions you have or any thoughts, definitely appreciate it. And then if you want this exact step-by-step -step guide that I used while making this video, uh, just send me an email. I'd love to share it with you. And other than that, thanks a lot for watching.